to everybody. My name is Roman Vostonkus and I'm from Lithuanian Space Association. Next time I would like also jump for the plane or take care about the dance support team, but today we'll talk about the living in the space. And do you believe it's real one? So what's what's your opinion? So actually you haven't seen the launch of Mars Science Laboratory last week when the thousands of uh, excited people were waiting for the rocket leaving the planet yet for the all the time to prove the existence of the life in the red planet. And today I would like to speak on three topics. Why the space is so important for us? How the technologies developed in the last 20 years have changed our understanding and the space approach itself and how the co cooperative projects and open source projects can support on the space knowledge level. So actually the space history starts with the Cold War times and uh, many nations are investing quite substantial amount of money like USA, Europe, Japan, Russia, China and it's quite natural that the space knowledge at these countries at, is at much advanced level that it's common on other countries. And uh, starting with the Cold War times, we had withstanding of two superpowers like USA and SSSR and quite a lot of money they are spent on that, the, the Peacekeeper project had a cost about 20 billion of dollars. And uh, just about 1985, USA President Ronald Reagan and SSR President Mikhail Gorbachev, they have agreed on the strategic defense initiative that stopped their arm race. But uh, another one project, like Space Shuttle Project, actually, it was also an example of withstanding of these two powers. A sir responded with a reusable spacecraft called Buran. Space Shuttle had 134 space missions with a cost of about $192 million. After ending of the Cold War, we had a quite nice international cooperation, that's International Space Station. And this station is quite a big, it's about 450 tons and about 100 meter length. And the contributing nations are USA, Russia, European Space Agency, Canada, Japan, and that's really a good example of international cooperation. Uh, China was not accepted to the participation, and the movement of the economic power from the transatlantic to the transpacific, it works now on an independent space station program, and it has also the own moon program. Uh, their spacecraft just recently have successful mission to the moon and now it's parked somewhere in the Lagrange point, one and a half million kilometers from there. Uh, we have four satellite navigation systems. The most well known is the GPS. Uh, Galileo is another one that's developed by European Union. GLONASS is from Russia. China has their own independent system, and all the systems provide almost the same services. So such a variety could be explained just by the defense purposes. Uh, we have quite interesting and tremendous discoveries in the space just because we are able to, to have a Hubble telescope. Hubble telescope has discovered the dark matter and the dark matter doesn't emit or scatter the electromagnetic waves and it was possible to discover it just by the strong gravitational effect that was predicted by the general relativity. And this dark matter occupies about 63% of the universe. Space is also quite a big economy and it's based mostly on the satellite services. In the last year, in 2010, the turnover and revenue of, this, of the space was about 
168 million of dollars, and 60% of that that was satellite services. Additionally, 50 million billion dollars <laughs> were collected from the sales of the ground segment equipment. Uh, the private investments are coming into the space. The companies that we are quite successful in the internet, like Elon Musk has sold the PayPal, it invested in the rocket company called SpaceX. Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, its development project called Blue Origin. Robert Bigelow, it's investing in the space hotel business. There are quite many companies that are working on a suborbital flights, like Virgin Galactic, like uh, X-Core, Rocket Plane, all of them are going to fly in the couple next year and it could become like a huge industry. So what conclusions we can draw from the first part of this presentation? That space is considered as the strategic asset. It was at the Cold War times. That actually it is also now. Space is also a strong market for the satellite services and private investments are also growing in the space and I believe that it will be next leap of development of the economy. So next topic, I would like to talk about what has changed in the last 20 years. Development of artificial intelligence of uh, the, the Moore's law and uh, synthetic biology, it's leading to the, to the new discoveries also in the space. The Moore's law introduced in 1971, it's stating that the number of transistors is doubling in the integrated circuits each two years, and it's valid for the last 30 years. This technology led to the emerging of the new market, of the microsatellite market. So every technology is evolving and it's shrinking in size. The discoveries in space have led also to the new understanding of life and new origin of the life. So it's really extreme conditions. Uh, when we, for example, look uh, that there are a kind of cyanobacteria that can live in the hot springs of Yellowstone Park, that the temperature about 100 centigrees, or there are centigrade, tardigrades, then can survive almost at absolute zero and resist the radiation 1,000 more that, that is possible to survive by any other being. So we, we really can look and discuss about new principles of origin of the life. And that's what professional of exobiology and evolution of biology are doing. We have quite interesting phenomena, it's called synthetic biology. John Preckventer is stating that synthetic biology will become an instrument for making anything in coming next 20 years. And uh, NASA NASA AIMS director Peter S. Warden is also stating that synthetic biology will be a robust technology for helping NASA in their different missions. So what's about the satellites? How it's affecting the satellites? The trend of the satellites, we are the growing in size and during 15 years approximately it reached the size of about 9 tons. But it causes also quite a big problems with that because the development cycle of such a satellite it's very long it takes five to ten years so it has enormous cost about hundred million of dollars and the technology such as space technology is very conservative we have approximately starting from 2000 year 2000 the new trend of the small satellites and that's because of this technologies about microelectronics about internet about development of new integrated circuits and this technology it's very promising because we could have the same advantages as the big satellites but just the cost of it it is several times less 
the cost it's about just maybe a million or five million and development cycle it's about two years that's an example how it looks like so the mini satellite it's about one and a half ton the micro satellite it's about 300 kilograms the nano satellite it's something in between between one and ten kilograms and there are even smaller one called pico satellite that are less than 300 grams so a lot of success projects in the IT market and now coming to the third part of my presentations uh, had also big impact and it could help us to understand how we can improve the space knowledge working on the open source projects. So if you are looking what are general principles that are governed in the space of, I mean, collaborative principles, that's the Outer Space Office of United Nations and it's uh, governing such agreements like Outer Space Treaty, Rescue Agreement, Liability Convention, Registration, Registration Convention, and Moon Agreement. We have a very nice example of collaboration of investigating of human genome product. It started with an investment about $3, million, $3 billion dollars and it took about 15 years and it produced about 140 fold economic output. And now this output is estimated like 796 billion of dollars. MIT. MIT has a very good example of open course via. That means you can could access this knowledge for free. So it's had really huge success. Uh, the, the visits of the site it has about 1 million visitors each month and it was translated into 20 mirror sites and the, the translations reach additionally 500,000 visits each month. Then we are looking into the mobile market. We have a very interesting example of Android market. It's, it's actually the open source software and in the last two years the market of the Android software has doubled and now it's reaching about 52% and that's despite that Apple is collecting about two-thirds of operating profit from this market. Something about the cooperative networks of satellites. Uh, Professor Shinichi Nakasuka from University of Tokyo is inviting to join the Unifork network. And the idea is to develop microsatellite, that each country develops microsatellite with a size about 50 kilograms, and the task is to reach about 50 participating countries. Such a satellite then is doing Earth observations, is revisiting the country just two times in a day, and it takes about just 20 minutes. So all the other time it's flying some of the other countries. So if you have such a big constellation, we could have a permanent access to the data. It's kind of mobile. So such a constellation has even a bigger advantage than a big one satellite. And it's called this, this principle like reasonable, reliable system engineering. That means that costs are lower, but advantages are almost the same. We have cooperation also even at the NASA level. NASA aims to organizing open source summit each year. A company called Virgil that was organized by Vision Atlantic and Google and the main task is to travel to the Mars. It's very, very such an amazing task. It's also inviting to participate in open source projects. So what are the lessons we could draw from the past? That Cold War doesn't help anybody to survive and the end of the Cold War also doesn't stop the investment into the space. So we had we have new space generation, new spacecraft giants. So it's, it's not only a game for the giants, we have, we have new possibilities of develop new satellite market. 
And I really believe that it's necessary to redistribute the defense budgets and to start with open source collaborative projects. And at least for the fundamental knowledge, of course, technical applications, it could be still protected by IP law. We are facing a problems of technological singularity. And uh, according to this concept, the human knowledge developed quite slow in the past, but during the last decades, it started, this knowledge is growing exponentially, and we have to, to learn how to manage, because it even could lead us to a kind of technological collapse. And uh, that's, of course, also a threat. It's not also only opportunities. All, all these technologies, like space, energy, like uh, synthetic biology, that's, of course, dual usage technologies. And if you can access from any laptop computer to the genome base and use free software to edit the genome, that's, of course, a problem of handling. So we have to learn to live it. But uh, intellectual property is very fragile, and any administrative bans can stop the development of such a knowledge. So I really believe that uh, the knowledge is heritage for the all mankind. People like to play individual reality, but would you like to try the true reality of second life? What do you think about private space and private genome? Uh, if you work on collaborative open source projects that could cut substantially the costs and increase the level of all the nations to the advanced level. And I really believe that the only way is to solve this problem is open source project. So no one, one nation can afford the human flights into the space alone. No one nation can handle the problems of technological singularity alone. Access to the previous space data missions are needed, and we need also the practical steps like standardization of components, like plug-and-play interfaces, open source software, and we need also, of course, global cooperative communities. So it was I have given also an example, like human genome has produced almost 100-fold economic output from the collaborative projects. So we need the open source code for the true life in the space breed. And you can contribute it in the next 20 years. Okay.